This fly we don't even know what to call it. It's super heavy. On the spreadsheet it was called X bugger, so that's what I'm calling it. Okay, X bugger requires you to subscribe to our channel to proceed. So go ahead and do that. I'll sit here and wait while you're looking at this awesome shaped hook. Subscribe. All right, so this is kind of a crazy hook. This is the XC290 from Umpqua. It's an awesome hook for streamers, for still water stuff. But as you can see, it's got a pretty crazy bend down at the end. I really like that because the, the hook point is so long and you can absolutely poke fish with this thing. Because of that, I use a slotted bead on it. I'm just going to use a 4.6 mil. This is a size 6 hook. And it will slide right over that. No problem. And uh, now we're ready to go. It's pretty basic bugger design, but... There are a few things that we like on our small streamers for rivers. Usually it involves a pretty gnarly bead and a long tail. So you'll see that as we build this. I do like to flip this uh, slotted bead so that the bulk of the weight is on the top side of the hook. With any luck that will ride upside down, um, you know, avoiding most hang-ups. So... Pretty straightforward from here. We'll just take a piece of marabou. So I've just pulled the marabou off the stem. And I want to use those fine points. You can see they're not all even. That's perfect. And I'll, I'll want the tail to be, you know, roughly that long. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll trim that off a little bit longer. And we showed this technique earlier uh, on a different video. But if you take your marabou and you take your thumbnail and you just pull out all those little marabou fibers which actually makes a cool dubbing take that out and then if you tie your bugger tail in all the way back here it's going to have a very very minimal tie-in point so you don't have a, a crazy looking bulky body so that's about the tail length that i'm looking for you can reverse palmer this if you want. I'll just show you the uh, the standard bugger tying method. I've got a cool color here in this. Uh, this is a whiting bugger hackle patch that we get from, from whiting. This is a custom dye job that only we have. And it's called uh, golden olive. So I'm mixing the golden olive with the tan. It's a, it's a good, good mix together. It's kind of sculpin-y. And I'm just going to tie that in by the tip. Rid of the excess and while I'm back here I'm going to tie my chenille which I'm using some tan ice chenille I've peeled off some of the fibers so I can tie that in also back there with uh, the rest of the stuff without having too big of a bulky tie-in point now even if you do have a little bit of a bump in the back like that that does not look clean at all as you wrap this forward, you can space out the back wraps a little bit and then bulk up the front wraps to make the body even out. So as you can see, as I wrap that, it kind of makes a, a nice even body on your bugger. So you can overcome some bumpy tie-in points pretty easily. Tie that in, trim it off, then we'll just take our hackle and wrap it forward and it this this hackle wants to kind of lay however it wants but once it's in there you can really tease it out and make it make it look good before I cut it off I, I like to bend that hackle back preen all the fibers back and, and build up a little bit of a, a thread head and then we'll trim that off All right, from here, we'll just whip finish this bad boy. Haven't used this for a while. You can just cut it. That is the, the loon whip finisher with a little blade on the back side of it. Anyway, from here, I will head cement it. 
But yeah, fish that bad boy. It's going to dance like crazy in the water.